And it gets you thinking about the nature of history, that it is told, that it can be misunderstood, it can be interpreted, it can be revised. Um, you know, we like to think of things in reality as being facts, but the fact is, <laughs> you know, facts are actually incredibly difficult things to prove. Can you prove you yourself on your own that man walked on the moon or that Shakespeare wrote all of those words in those books? You know, we have agreed upon societal truths that we all get on board with, but ah, there it is in chat. History is written by the victors. I think that's I think that's a a partial truth. History can be written by the victors. History can also be written by people who are oppressed and have suffered and history can be rewritten when the times change as well. I mean history is is an attempt to preserve the past through through, you know, many different means, sometimes words, sometimes literature, movies, novels. There's many mediums for trying to tell the story of the past of history, but it is always told as a story. It will always be a reenactment and therefore it can be tainted by human perception or human memory or even human agenda you know uh shijima says eg dead sea scrolls i uh, i listened to a podcast about the dead sea scrolls and their significance that was interesting i enjoyed listening to that um but that's really like a, a field that i haven't put it into perspective of the way i'm like i don't know quite what its relevance is to what i'm talking about right now but of course there'll be a relevance because it's part of history that we found it. Um, I think the significance of the Dead Sea Scrolls is that they confirmed a lot of stuff that's in the Bible, right? Like, it's like a secondary source. So you have all these stories and fables in the Bible, uh, the the Christian, the Judeo-Christian Bible, I believe. You know, like, they, there's, there's some... There's all different versions of it, right? And... There's a specific version of it, which is one of the more common ones that these Dead Sea Scrolls confirm. And so they were found, I believe, maybe the 1920s. If I'm remembering these things correctly, but I might not be. Whoa, 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 whoa. They were forgeries. Well, in the in the podcast I listened to, there were no mention of them being forgeries. Someone in chat says always check sources. You know, it's easy to say that. I think sometimes we need to acknowledge that we don't always do that like i the guys on the podcast from my experience one of them seems you know very trustable like not someone who's going to uh deliberately deceive first of all maybe get some erroneous information possibly but i mean what happens when you check the sources and then the sources contradict something someone else is saying and then you know you can go down a rabbit hole so I'm not I'm not saying that means it's correct. I'm just saying, hey, look, this is what I heard. All right. This is what I heard. Uh Yarana Vakados puts it really well. You gotta trust someone or else you would die doing research. Yeah, that's it. Like, we've got to remember a lot of what we learn in school, you know, we had trusted institutions and authorities and teachers to learn from, right? You can't Oh, oh, what did you learn today in school, Timmy? Two plus two equals four. Did you check your sources? Did you do your research, Timmy? What do you mean you're only five? Oh, Timmy, you disgrace me. You didn't double check the teacher, did you? What's that, Timmy? You used Google? Well, you know, who put the information on Google, Timmy? Timmy, you're five years old. You're using a computer, but you're not smart enough. Poor old Timmy. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Tea for Timmy. Tea and chat for Timmy. You see my point though, right? Now, if you want to go out into the world and put out like, you know, if you want to fight for a cause or put out something that you want to influence and change the world with, I think then then's probably a good cause to be put in some, uh, some serious, serious, you know, research or integrity behind what you're doing. Like, we've got a little Sumer Says channel where we take these waffles and we chop them up into clips. If ever that grows to the point where it becomes a space for me to make some more, uh, you know, researched and more, I don't know, like big themed videos, like I've got some ideas to do stuff like that, then hopefully I'll be able to have the time and resources to then also 
you know, treat it in that manner and be able to provide sources and do more research, etc. But while it's a little ho hobby project channel to slowly grow, you know, it's not something I'm thinking about really. And I think I make that pretty clear when I have my little chats and waffles, you know, show you my uh, ignorances. So if we go back to the point, uh, wrong to censor history, e.g. last night of the proms, the rule of Britannia, land, hope and glory. Do not know what you mean by that because those things uh, don't mean much to me or, or, or I know what they are. School need to learn new history and make up your own ideas from that. Um, I don't know about making up your own ideas, but that's it though. Like we interpret it, we interpret history differently from one another. So if we have shared upon historical facts, we can see different meaning in it. It all boils down to the nature of being human and reality is just, it's so much more chaos than we uh, give credit to a lot of the time. Like being human is messy. Okay. So now keep in mind when reading history is who's writing it? What do they have to gain from it? Almost any one place you learn history is based, is biased in their own ways no matter how much we try says chimpo yeah and what is the nature of that bias as well like sometimes bias is not a gender it's just misconception or different form of perception of things that's why i don't like the well i say i don't like it i think you need more nuance with the history is written by the victors thing because it is but sometimes it's not and just because it's written by the victors doesn't mean it's inaccurate you know who are the victors i think world war ii is a really interesting one for uh for perception um because a lot of people have the perception that like okay over here in britain you come across the uh because again this is like people's biases right if you're from somewhere there's a good chance that you see world war ii in your favor right so over here in the uk um, heard the heard the the thing time and time again, like, oh, us Brits won the war, you know, no one stood up against Hitler but us, and da di da di da, like, with the reason it happened. A lot of Americans might say that America won the war, we came in and fixed it, you know, I've heard that opinion thrown around a lot of times. Um, what I don't hear a lot is much praise for the russians and it's probably because of the cold war and all this that came after it but like if anyone paid the price of that war uh, as soldiers the russians like absolutely threw people at the nazis they lost they lost like m millions upon millions upon millions of people i can't remember the numbers but it's astronomical compared to what other countries put in and so this whole idea of like who wins the war, it's so such like a basic appeal to like tribalism and wanting to be on that side. You know, if someone if someone's like if you're arguing with someone that Britain won the war or that America won the war, chances are they're probably British or American, right? Um But as some of you were saying in chat and I always say, no one wins a war. People die. Yeah. That's how I feel about wars anyway. No one wins them, just lots of people die. Uh, Leon says, I think not Russia won the war, everyone won together. Interesting, yeah. I, I never hear that. I never hear people saying we did it together, which is like the most obvious thing because there were lots of people, lots of different parties involved, right? But, you know, war is, war is mostly death. The idea of winning it is kind of absurd. And uh, what about the victims of war who aren't fighting? Are, are they part of the victory? I, I don't know. You can't win a war, you can only avoid it, says Jepton. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds smart. Uh, the Mojo Monkey says, In American schools, we definitely learned that it was a group effort to win the war. You know, like, it, uh, I imagine it's different depending on where you're from. Like, you encounter people with different views, right? And then some of them, some of them stick with you. One of the ones that stick with me is like, I've heard it quite a lot of times. Quite often, to be honest, in movies, you hear, like, the dialogue of, like, the Americans won the war, but... I haven't exactly uh, made any notes or retained onto this to show you what I'm talking about, but I'm sure some of you know what I'm on about.